Hosea chapter 13, the Lord's anger against Israel. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. If you want to follow along, grab a Bible, whatever version of the Bible you have. If you don't have a Bible, there are plenty of free Bible resources you can download on your phone. You can look up on your computer. Um, let somebody know you need a Bible in your church. I'd love to be able to provide Bibles, but anytime I see one that's available, if I can purchase it or get my hands on it, it's just beautiful to have the Holy Scriptures. It's such a blessing to be able to read the Word of God and especially to do so as a family. Chapter 13, the Lord's anger against Israel. When the tribe of Ephraim spoke, the people shook with fear, for that tribe was important in Israel. But the people of Ephraim sinned by worshiping Baal and thus sealed their destruction. Now they continue to sin by making silver idols, images shaped skillfully with human hands. Sacrifice to these, they cry, and kiss the calf idols. Blah. Therefore, they will disappear like the morning mist, like a dew in the morning sun, like chaff blown by the wind, like smoke from a chimney. I have been the Lord your God ever since I brought you out of Egypt. You must acknowledge no God but me, for there is no other Savior. I took care of you in the wilderness, in that dry and thirsty land. But when you had eaten and were satisfied, you became proud and forgot me. Mm -mm. So now I will attack you like a lion, like a leopard that lurks along the road. Verse 8. Like a bear whose cubs have been taken away, I will tear out your heart. I will devour you like a hungry lioness and mangle you like a wild animal. You are about to be destroyed, O Israel, yes, by me, your only helper. Now where is your king? Let him save you. Where are all the leaders of the land, the king and the officials you demanded of me? In my anger, I gave you kings, and in my fury, I took them away. Ephraim's guilt has been collected, and his sin has been stored up for punishment. Pain has come to the people like the pain of childbirth, but they are like a child who resists being born. The moment of birth has arrived, but they stay in the womb. Should I ransom them from the grave? Should I redeem them from death? O oh, death, bring on your terrors. O oh, grave, bring on your plagues, for I will not take pity on them. Verse 15, Ephraim was the most fruitful of all his brothers, but the east wind, a blast from the Lord, will arise in the desert. All their flowing springs will run dry, and all their wells will disappear. Every precious thing they own will be plundered and carried away. The people of Samaria must bear the consequences of their guilt. Because they rebelled against their God, they will be killed by an invading army. Their little ones dashed to death against the ground. Their pregnant women ripped open by swords. Chapter 14, Healing for the Repentant. Yes, I like the sounds of that. Amen to that. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. For your sins have brought you down. Bring your confessions and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive all our sins and graciously receive us so that we may offer you our praises. Assyria cannot save us, nor can our war horses, war horses. Never again will we say to the idols we have made, you are our gods. Amen. No, in you alone do the orphans find mercy. The Lord says, then I will heal you of your faithlessness. My love will know no bounds, for my anger will be gone forever. I will be to Israel like a refreshing dew from heaven. Israel will blossom like the lily. It will send roots deep into the soil like the cedars in Lebanon. Verse 6. Its branches will spread out like beautiful olive trees, as fragrant as the cedars of Lebanon. My people will again live under my shade. They will flourish like grain and blossom like grapevines. They will be as fragrant as the wines of Lebanon. Oh, Israel, stay away from idols. I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you. Amen to that. I am like a tree that is always green. All your fruit comes from me. Let those who are wise understand these things. Let those with discernment listen carefully. The paths of the Lord are true and right. And righteous people live by walking in them. But in those paths, sinners stumble and fall. That's the end of Hosea. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and read this little bit on the bottom because having a study Bible is very beneficial. And yes, there are so many great resources available for free. It says, Hosea closes with an appeal to listen, learn, and benefit from God's word. To those receiving the Lord's message through Hosea, this meant the difference between life and death. 
For you, the reader of the book of Hosea, the choice is similar. You can either listen to the book's message and follow God's ways or refuse to walk along the Lord's path. But people who insist on following their own direction without God's guidance are in total darkness and have no idea what they are stumbling over. Proverbs 4.19, if you are lost, you can find the way by turning from your sin and following God. That is so true, yes. So there are benefits to having a study Bible, but that is not canon. So that is not actually of the Bible. That is some interpreter and study person. You can actually find out information on where study Bibles come from, who brings these teams together. There's even really amazing software. I think the best of the best is probably Logos software. And there's just so many incredible resources for us to not only read the Bible, but to also dig deeper into the scriptures and try to really truly understand what the word is saying without our own personal interpretation, which can be very dangerous. Um, so right after Hosea, we will have the prophet Joel. We have just the minor prophets left of the Old Testament. We'll continue to read the Bible to pray for one another, encourage one another, and walk in love. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this opportunity. We want to thank you for Hosea. We want to thank you for the major and the minor prophets of the Old Testament. I cannot wait to meet some of these amazing people. And I can't wait to see you, Lord. We look forward to that day. We want to make our time on this planet as beneficial to your kingdom as possible. So please forgive us of our sins and trespasses. Help us to detest sin. For those of us who are struggling with sin in any way, shape, or form, please help us to overcome our struggles. We know that the power to overcome anything is in you, in faithful obedience and trust in you, walking according to your will as best as we can, not by our strength, but by dependence on the Holy Spirit, Lord. Um, I ask you to be with my brothers and sisters, whatever they're going through, their loved ones, their friends, their family members, their co-workers, their jobs. You know everyone's hurts, their struggles or obstacles, their praises, God. So please just listen to us and help us to draw close to you. Help us to not be swayed by the world and the news and everything that we hear, but to hunger for your Holy Scripture, to hunger for more time with you, to hunger for you being our Lord, our Savior, our God, and that we are not our God. Despite what the world teaches us about who we are and um, just selfishness, Lord. Lord, we want to glorify you, to depend on you, and to just bring your name, the glory that it deserves. We can just cry out, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. And we're grateful to have you, the one true God, as our God. We are so grateful for the Bible because we love drawing close to you, spending time together as a family, as a family in Christ Jesus. So thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Help us to sleep. Help us to have energy and vigor to serve your holy kingdom and to serve our amazing King. We love you. Amen. See you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.